So this is a question that I was asked in a recent webinar that I gave on academic literature. And the question is, at what point can you be confident that you know enough to be the expert in the area relative to the examiner? I can just imagine in the Viva, the examiner saying, but you did not read X author on this area. Now, this is a really good question. It's quite a common question because a lot of people worry about what will be asked in the examination and a lot of people worry about basically being found out by the examiner when it comes to that all-important defense. But even though it's a perfectly good question, it is based on a flawed assumption and that is that you actually have to be the expert relative to the examiner. Now I think this comes from the commonly given well-meaning advice that when you go into the thesis defense that you are the expert in the room. But that certainly wasn't the case when I did my defense because one of the examiners, the external examiner, he had invented one of the techniques that I was using and he'd been working in the field for probably about 30 years. So there is simply no way that I, as a 26-year-old PhD student who'd been working for less than four years, would have the same level of um, expertise and experience as him. I mean, it's just, it, it's just ridiculous. And I think it's ridiculous to um, expect that of PhD students um, defending, defending their thesis because PhD ultimately is a beginner level qualification in the world of professional academia. So I think it's important to, first of all, get a more accurate idea about what is actually required in a thesis defense. And I think there are two things. First of all, has your research been competently executed, which the examiners will know more or less from your thesis? And then also, are you capable of discussing your research with other academics? Okay, that's it. Now, as for the second part of the question, in terms of what if the examiner mentions some author that you haven't read? Well, I think, that first of all, if you've been working in your field for, you know, three, four, five years, possibly more, you'll notice that in the literature, the same authors come up time and time again. So whether that's the big names in your field or um, the people who are doing very, very similar research to you, so your, your direct competition. And if it's something that hasn't come up, if nobody else has cited it in all of the other papers that you've read, it's probably not something which is massively earth shatteringly important you know it's probably not the kind of thing that massively undermines all of your all of your research so what you can do is treat the question as a starting point for a discussion so the first thing you can do is say to the examiners well i've not come across that particular paper what was it that they said and then use that as a starting point to discuss the implications of your research on that particular idea and that idea on, on your research. And if you're capable of doing that, even if you don't know that research going into it, then it will be okay. But in order to do that, in order to come up with a good answer, you need to be accustomed to discussing your research with other academics. So I think it's really important to take every opportunity you can to describe and discuss your research with other people, whether that's other PhD students, your supervisor, other academics in your department, people from other departments. And then you get used to having your ideas challenged, you get used to having ideas that you haven't thought of being thrown at you. And that needs to happen throughout the course of your PhD because it's part of the training that you need to go through as a, as a professional academic. And if you do that, throughout the course of your PhD, then you'll be much better prepared for facing those awkward questions when it comes to your thesis defense.